accomplishing so much and you're thinking to yourself, when did they find the time to do all that, right? You're here getting laundry done, dealing with kids, um, trying to make sure you're spending time with your spouse, just checking the boxes, right? And at the end of the day, for the things that you know you feel purpose to do, you're trying to get those things done too. So we're going to share two things that you can do that's going to really help you reclaim your time, we're going to call it that, and also to get anything you need to get done, done, right? So just two points on that. So if that's you and you're trying to figure out how you're going to get some things done in your time frames, definitely stick with me for this one. Um, thank you guys for joining me. This is Win the Day. I am Tanika D'Souza, the 100K Challenge Chick. Ta -da! It's across the bottom. Um, I am a business coach and I empower women to break the 100K income ceiling in their business. I do that one because I'm helping you to build a foundation in your life that will support you in your six figure business and in the process of building it. But two, I actually have been in business for over 13 years. Um, doing several different things, but really noteworthy is my bakery that I ran for 13 years. It actually still exists. Um, and that was a pretty big animal that I had to run all while my kids were young, my marriage, you know, like balancing all those different things. So now I take what I did in my business and train you to do the same thing so that you can support yourself adjust your business and your entrepreneurial to your entrepreneurial journey to your lifestyle, right? That's the big mistake that I made is I just felt like I had to sacrifice everything for my business and I did not customize that business to fit my life. So now that's what I do. That's what I teach. I am all about that work from anywhere life. If you want to see where I've been in the last month, <laughs> because I just go wherever I want to go now. Um, check out my stories, check out my highlights. But yeah, that's what I want in my life. Now, you guys are probably in a different state. If your kids are younger or out of the house or wherever your family situation leads you, I want you to choose the entrepreneurial journey and choose business models that will support who you are authentically and the life that you want to live. So that's what I do as a business coach. That's what I'm all about is creating the foundation in your life, but also making sure that you're building a business that serves you. So that's the 100K Society where I train people. Um, that is an awesome group, a business coaching community. And you can find out more about it at 100K society.com. I think I have a caption for it. Let's see. Yeah. Because I'm fancy. <laughs> All right. So let's get to this point. Tips on how to find the time to get anything done. And I'm sure some of you are reading that like, you don't know the stuff I have to balance. You don't know what I need to get done. So how can you say that I can get anything done? Well, the point is really about managing your time a little better. And I'm just giving two simple things that you can do. There's a ton that you can learn in the space of time management. And the thing that I used to hate is when I read these things and they imagined that clearly I just chose to waste my time in these certain ways so that all these things were just easy to eliminate. And that just wasn't true, right? The thing that I know about you because it was true of me, is almost everything that we have on our plate is important. Working in your child's school, doing ministry work, community service, clearly raising your children, being a responsible wife, not letting your house fall apart, like all of those things matter. And you don't just get to say, well, let me just eliminate all of this so that I can have 20 extra hours in my day. Like that's not what we're saying. But there are two things that I'm sharing and I'm going to share them right now so that you can start being really productive with your time. So you guys know the routine. Get your notebook. 
and your pen and let's take some notes um, because I want you to take these notes. I think there's there's a difference in you hearing something. There's a difference when you write it because you kind of own it. And then there's a difference when you write it, you go back to it and you actually apply it. So that's the part that I need you to do on your own is to apply what we're talking about. Don't spend your time with me and then not act on the things that you're learning. So every week I'm with you twice a week sharing something that will help you get the foundation for your business, but I want you to implement. That's the name of the game. Implement it and execute. So point number one, what is a tip that you can have that's going to help you get anything done? And this is the thing that has saved me so much is number one, set aside the time, right? So this is blocking, time blocking. I use my calendar and I can't, where's my phone? <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't ring. I use my uh, phone and I literally, like if somebody says that we need to have a meeting, I pull out my phone and I book that meeting right there. I also have a scheduler so that when I'm talking to people, I say, hey, great, let's schedule a time to talk. When they book that time, it shows up on my calendar and blocks the time on my calendar. The reason why I'm sharing time blocking with you is because you need to prioritize and put in place the time for you to get stuff done. If you do this early in the week and say, okay, on Thursday evening, I'm going to get this done. You know, first you have to, first you have to decide what is the weekly goal, right? What are you trying to accomplish? And then two, block it out on your calendar. So I use my phone a lot, but I also use this. That's why it's on my desk, my calendar. And I cross off stuff that I need to get done, times when I'm traveling, group meetings, times when I'm teaching. That was my September calendar and not even full. So you can see October has quite a bit of stuff written in there. Um, and then, yeah, times when I'm teaching, things that my kids have going on. So I know I'm driving or I'm dealing with them. They have homecoming weekend workshops that I'm teaching. Other speaking engagements are on here doctor's appointments for me and my kids. So if you prioritize all those things, then why not go ahead and add in the time for you to um, finish your lead magnet or to develop that Facebook group or to, you know, do your Bible study, whatever it is that you need to get done, you absolutely can plan for the time to do that. For some of you, especially as married women, you'll say, well, you know, some of these things I just need to get done. It, it feels rude to put that on my calendar and to schedule in things, especially when it's related to my husband and kids, because then it's like I'm boxing them in. The reality is if you don't, one, you could forget. Two, you could end up doing it for such a long period of time instead of devoting a concentrated amount of time to get that activity done. So I used to feel like that. Like my kids shouldn't be on my calendar. I don't need to pencil my kids in, right? I don't need to pencil in date night with my husband, but I am a coach. I give people my calendar. They book appointments with me. Those are paid appointments, right? So now I want it in my head to have awesome date nights and time with my family, but I have allowed my clients to book that time. Had I gone into my calendar and said, no, this is, you know, Wednesday night is my husband or Taco Tuesday because my husband loves tacos, right? If we're going to go out for Taco Tuesday, I need to put that on my calendar. So that way I don't overbook myself. I have set the time. Like think of it more like you're prioritizing this thing because you're highlighting it and saying, here is the dedicated time to get that done. The other thing that I do as I build things, so for example, um, the 100K Society is my business coaching community. Before it was launched, I put on my calendar the time when I knew I was going to be teaching that group. So we meet every Monday evening. So I blocked out Monday evening starting 
a good month or two before I actually launched that group. And what I did was use that time on that Monday in order to develop the things that I needed to develop before I launched that community. So I had that time blocked out for me to work and I had Wednesday mornings blocked off for me to meet with my membership team. That was in the planning stage. And those things were blocked on my calendar. And when the deadline came for me to launch the community, I already had people waiting to join that community. I was set. And I was already in a routine of running that group at a certain time. It was already on my schedule. And I had meetings with my team already on schedule. So that way, when the group launched and I realized small things that I forgot, because now people are actively using the community, I have time dedicated to get that done. So that's what I want you guys to be thinking about with this time blocking and setting aside the time. It's not that you're being rude or boxing in that activity. It's really your way of prioritizing it making sure that it's on the calendar and making sure that you can get it done. Number two, this is going to be the kicker and the activity that is going to really show you how you have been wasting your time. And that is keeping a time journal, right? If you can look at your cell phone, a lot of cell phones will give you in some of the data or a, analysis of your phone use, how you spend your time on your cell phone. And for a lot of you, your cell phone is where you are on social media. Now, I am on social media because a lot of times I'm working, but I also get trapped into watching this reel. That was funny. Now this one's funny. Now share this meme. Now, And before I know it, I have wasted like 45 minutes or an hour cracking up when I could have been doing other things. And so there's a lot of ways that you are, I'm going to say, losing time doing things that aren't that productive or things that you can just do for 15 minutes and use the other 45 minutes of the hour to do something that you know is going to move the needle in your business or in your family life, or just to check some things off your list that you're able to get done. So time journaling. Very much like if you're trying to lose weight, you start counting calories or you start writing down the different food that you've eaten. And then you look at your week and say, okay, this week I was able to lose four pounds. Here's what I ate that week. Here's what I need to adjust. You know, maybe I should have said two pounds, right? Because at a two pound, you want to evaluate, did I do enough? Should I do a little more? Is this on par for me? And you make that decision. But if you don't have that journal, all you're going to do is have the result at the end to say, I lost two pounds. I don't know how I got here. And you tend to repeat instead of understanding, oh, yeah, this was the week I ate a lot of popcorn or I ate a lot of different grains. So I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to do less of that and more of these vegetables. And then you look at your week the following week and you say, okay, making those slight adjustments, I was able to lose four pounds. The same is true with your time journal. When you start to time block, which was number one, to say, this is what I'm going to get done in these chunks of time and plan it, just prioritize it, plan it, schedule it out. It's okay. Including date night, ladies, it's okay. Put it on your calendar so you don't forget you can be prepared. He'll feel special about that. You don't have to tell him, oh, let me block you in. What time do you want specifically? Like, you don't have to do it that way. You can put it on your calendar and make sure that it gets done. So the thing that I want you to also realize is when you start to track your time, you might realize, hey, I am doing a lot of stuff that's really important, but how can I start to now? prioritize? How can I delegate some of these things? And how can I actually delete some of them because they're not important right now, right? So for example, um, you could be like a overly OCD person and you're literally cleaning out your fridge twice a week, throwing away old food, wiping down stuff. Maybe just do that once a week, maybe just Saturday morning um, at the end of the week or whenever you're 
just before you buy groceries. Like maybe make a plan to adjust. And I'm not telling you to just go to living like a slob, but there's sometimes you might feel, you might realize that you're kind of overdoing it in some areas and totally neglecting others, right? So cleaning out the fridge twice a week is like insane for me because I think we do it maybe really when something spills in there. <laughs> And you got to get that up. And then it's like, just clean the whole fridge. So maybe every two to three weeks. And then you throw out the stuff because you picked it up. And then you're like, oh, this is old trash. <laughs> so, right. I'm not waste. I'm not spending a lot of my time like doing kitchen management. But maybe that's your thing, right? I know I spend a lot of time doing kid activities and doing... um like, yeah, kid activities is really where I spend my time. So are there some things in that category that I can delegate or I can do a little less of? Um, not because I'm trying to spend less time with them, but sometimes I'm definitely headed more toward hovering versus just normal parenting. So evaluate. If you don't take the notes, if you don't consider what you're doing, there's no way for you to make adjustments. So blocking your time to get things done and keeping a time journal is going to be the best two things you can do. And you can do them right away. You can start doing that today so that you're now going to have a better handle on how you're spending your time, how you need to prioritize your time, are there some things that you can delegate to others? And then are there some things that you just flat out need to eliminate? So that's your task for the next few days is to keep that time journal. Start blocking off your time. When you say you're going to get something done, put it on your calendar. Actually get it done. And I put it in my phone because it, I can put alarms and alerts on there. If I write it in this notebook, that means I need to actually every single day pull this notebook out and look at it and use it, right? So do what is going to work for you. So thank you guys for joining me for this win the day. I want to hear how you guys are going to start maximizing your time um, and prioritizing the things that need to get done. So share with me uh, what your walkaways are from today. You can even just put in hashtag helpful. This was helpful. I learned something. I'm going to do it. Um, but definitely, if there are other tips that you have that have been really helpful for you, definitely include that in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Maybe that's something that I can share or that you can share in the private Facebook group. Thank you guys for joining me. And I will be with you again. This is Win the Day with Tanika D'Souza the 100K challenge chick, making sure that we're all building our 100K lifestyle, which is the foundation for our 100K businesses. You guys have a great day. Bye.